uh, hi guys welcome back in this video we shall be talking about stroke in a very quick manner now stroke is known as cerebral vascular accident in very simple words let's say if you're having the symptoms of stroke which is lasting a less than uh, one day that's 24 hours is known as transient ischemic attack if it's lasting more than one day it is known as stroke now what is stroke in very easy way i'm going to explain is just like a heart attack your body is made up of muscles bone tissue all these things right so all these things requires oxygen in order to survive so the oxygen is being transported to your body by the uh, by the heart okay so the blood is having oxygen that is our uh, blood is carrying the oxygen and it is transported to the entire body surface right by the heart but the heart itself is a muscle so it itself requires oxygen in order to survive now what happens in heart attack the blood vessel which is supplying to the heart itself gets uh, damaged itself gets blocked so the muscle of the heart is not able to contract and slowly slowly that muscle starts to die this is known as myocardial infarction whenever the muscle dies you're having a lot of pain so whenever you're having a patient of heart attack a myocardial infarction is going to have a lot of pain and the management of heart attack itself is you have to give a lot high dose of painkiller you have to give morphine okay so uh, that is the thing uh, same thing happens in the uh, brain as well so just to give you an idea just to understand in this way heart attack is taking place in the brain uh, heart heart attack that is taking place in the brain is known as stroke okay it's it's not the literal meaning just to tell you a, a perspective so the uh, the brain itself is going to need uh, blood okay it's going to need oxygen so how is this oxygen coming by the blood vessel now anytime this blood vessels have been damaged definitely it's going to have a stroke now okay so uh, what are the types of stroke in the first place okay the types of stroke in the first place there are two types of stroke okay as i told you the blood vessel which is supplying to the brain is affected is getting occluded that is known as ischemic stroke ischemic stroke means blood supply is reduced when the blood supply is reduced less amount of oxygen is going so this is known as ischemic stroke and ischemic stroke are more common around two-thirds of uh, stroke is known as ischemic stroke and one third is your hemorrhagic stroke now why do you have ischemic stroke in the first place the blood vessel can get narrowed down why will it get narrowed down because of atherosclerosis lot of junk food lot of food lot of uh, saturated fat lot of trans fat lot of stress lot of sedentary lifestyle not working out uh, sleeping in the bed no physical exercise will be having high amount of uh, things going on into your body okay so what will happen all the fats the fat around the abdominal area that is known as central uh, obesity so this will go and accumulate into your blood vessel so whenever there's accumulation of uh, fat into the blood itself gets narrowed down so always our body wants us the blood to move in a very fluid motion right right so whenever it, it wants to move in a fluid motion it makes a thin layer about uh, of that uh, plug inside your blood vessel so that the blood can move smoothly right the problem arises in case a thin flame right it gets uh, ruptured there's a massive amount of uh, bleeding going on and so immediately that area the body thinks that area is bleeding so it goes and stops the bleeding by platelet aggregation it goes and clogs the area okay already the blood vessel was narrowed because of fat deposition now that fat deposition is covered by thin flame to make it more smooth in case the thin uh, flame gets uh, broken off it triggers clotting factors clotting uh, will take place so obviously the area is narrowed more clotting the blood vessel will be occluded so the area that is supplied by the blood vessel will be damaged same thing happens in the brain okay same thing happens with the heart also uh, your heart is supplied by the coronary arteries if the arteries have been clogged by this atherosclerosis by rupture of this uh, plug you are having a lot of bleeding taking place and permanent uh, clotting has been uh, encounter so uh, same thing happens in the brain as well i'm uh, pardon me i'm going very very fast because i have to make the video short okay all right so what happens in the stroke same thing happens like let's say you're having a lot of fat in your body that is going accumulating in your blood vessels is getting ruptured clotting factors take, comes in and then all the aggregation takes place and the blood vessel to the brain is stopped now how do you pinpoint an area now very simple way any part of your body is controlled by your brain any part of your body which has been damaged let's say my handwriting is gone i'm not having we i'm having weakness or i'm not able to walk i'm not able to talk right that area i have to know what area of that part is been controlled by which part of my brain let's say i'm not able to talk right and my speech is gone then i have to see my anatomy knowledge that to see what part of my brain is actually controlling my speech so that is where i can know yes okay this area i know this area is supplied by this area so this area might be damaged now i'll go again one step back and see 
that area is supplied by which artery which blood vessel so i'll be able to say yes this blood vessel has been damaged okay this is the where your anatomy knowledge comes into action now the second type of stroke is known as hemorrhagic stroke in this hemorrhagic stroke what you will see is that the blood vessel will rupture in the first place as i told you if you're having high blood pressure there's a more tendency of the blood vessels to rupture and when i when i'm young i'm young you are young right and the people who are old age the blood vessel gets more stiffer like if you see the blood vessels here oh my god i can't see my this here. okay all right all right so whenever you see your blood vessels right if you feel it is very rubber it's very soft it's very uh, this thing that if you see a patient of around 80 years 90 years there will be the blood vessel will be like a, you know cord like it will be very stiff it won't be that elastic okay so not elastic that means there is more chance of rupture so that is the reason uh, you are going to see a strokes generally in old age patients okay so what happens in hemorrhagic stroke inside the blood inside the brain your the brain is covered by the skull no uh, the uh, head is very it's a very strong bone right so whenever there is bleeding going on it is going to compress the brain because the bleeding cannot go outward right let's say if i'm having bleeding here i'm having swelling here it will it will it will uh, you know it will become big but inside the brain the brain will be squished because of the uh, the skull right so it will be uh, tamponade effect will be there so it's going to press the brain again so it is more dangerous so that is the reason if you are having this you need to make a small hole the bar hole surgery or keyhole surgery to remove the pressure this is very 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 vital okay so again just to summarize you're having ischemic stroke and hemorrhagic stroke ischemic stroke more common two third of strokes are ischemic stroke uh, one third is known as your hemorrhagic stroke ischemic stroke most common reason is your uh, uh, atherosclerosis right so what is the treatment of uh, uh, treatment of ischemic stroke now please remember the treatment has to be started before three hours okay if it's bad more early the more better right if you're having the patient comes before the three hours that time you will be using thrombolysis that means whatever the clot has been produced will be reducing the clot you want to break down the clot so that the blood vessel uh, pathway patency is again regained okay one thing second you'll be giving aspirin you'll want to reduce the blood pressure and you want to also give clopidogrel to order not to create any more uh, thrombolysis more uh, antiplatelet drugs have been given in uh, ischemic stroke remember the cutoff is three hours some can be three or maybe four but i will take up to three hours okay now hemorrhagic stroke you are not going to do thrombolysis you will be damaging more the, the blood vessels it's itself bleeding and you give anti-platelet drugs anti you give drugs to stop which hampers the process of bleeding okay so there will be more 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 bleeding in hemorrhagic stroke in hemorrhagic stroke you want the blood vessel to uh, stop bleeding and how the bleeding is been stopped by platelet aggregation now if you get anti platelet drugs man you are going to make the condition more worse right so this is very very important so it is contraindicated if it is in uh, hemorrhagic stroke you cannot do thrombolysis the only treatment in uh, hemorrhagic stroke is that you have to reduce your blood pressure now very well how do you know that this is an ischemic stroke or a hemorrhagic stroke very well uh, most of the cases will be ischemic stroke as i told you two third of the cases of stroke will be two will be isch uh, ischemic stroke and one third will be a hemorrhagic stroke now for that you do a ct scan remember whenever you do a ct scan any part of your brain which is dead which is dead that will be appearing darker in color will be appearing dark in color so in ischemic stroke what is happening the blood vessel and the blood is reduced blood contains uh, what oxygen so oxygen is reduced so oxygen is reduced the cells will die so that some part of your brain will die so that will appear more darker in ct scan so you can find out okay this part of the brain is appearing more darker as compared to the surrounding this means this is a uh, ischemic stroke whereas in hemorrhagic stroke fluid in ct scan will be appearing as more bright very very bright color okay it will be appearing very bright i'm very sure that you might have seen um, um extradural hemorrhage subdural hemorrhage extradural hemorrhage will be like a you know biconvex kind of shape like which we call as idli shape right uh, this is where you differentiate if uh, if the tissue is dead again tissue is dead will be appearing what will be appearing darker right will be appearing more dark as compared to surrounding if the uh there's blood there's hemorrhage right that area will be appearing more 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 brighter so if you're having extradural hemorrhage you'll be having biconvex you can see that if you're having um another you have uh crescentic shape so this is how you differentiate okay this is hemorrhagic or ischemic stroke please remember again uh, contraindication you have to remember that in hemorrhagic stroke you cannot do thrombolysis we're going to 
damage the patient to a very great extent. And please understand that uh, stroke is itself a very complicated stuff and uh, just one doctor cannot manage a case of stroke. We need a specialized team in which include your physiotherapist will be including your uh, nephrolo uh, sorry, your neurologist will be including your ICU nurse and internal medicine guys so, and also radiologists. This has to work as a team and everybody will be working in a very fast manner and there will are a lot of protocols that have been followed. Okay, so radiology guy will be saying okay, it is ischemic or hemorrhage. The medicine guy will be taking care of the blood pressure. The uh, neurologist will be taking care of which part of the brain has been affected. The ICU and nurses are expert in managing those kind of patients. The physiotherapy will come into action because yes, the patient will be paralyzed. And if you are paralyzed, your muscle will go in atrophy. And anytime you are in very long time in the bed, there is high chance of again deep vein thrombosis. So you have to move active movements or passive movement has to be started. That's why we always want uh, anytime you have a surgery, we will tell the patient to start to go start to work as fast as possible like, you know keep on moving if you keep on moving that stiffness will be any orthopedic surgery we need to move the joint as fast as possible okay just to avoid additions formation and, and avoid uh, stiffness coming up into that and more movement you do the muscles have been activated right and there is no less come out atrophy nerves have been stimulated more amount of blood vessels um, blood is coming more amount of blood is coming that means more nutrition is coming more oxygen is coming it will heal more 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 faster so even it is going to hurt you if you have a burn injury right if you have a burn injury there will be contraction formation if you do not move your hand if you do not move your hand if you have a burn injury you will be having contraction and once this contraction has been produced it is very 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 difficult in order to correct this okay very important so anytime you have a burn in your hand or any injury this thing you have to move that area very 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 fast okay very important because if you don't do it it's the outcome is going to be very 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 damaged like if i have a burn in my hand i have to anyhow move it i have to move in a certain extent that tears are going to roll out of my eyes it's, it's going to be painful but it's very 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 important okay it's very painful but it's very 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 important so this is one thing now uh, i just want to summarize the video about uh, how do you manage how do you reduce the chances of having a stroke in the first place very very important is that you always want to have your blood pressure under check most of the people who are in the world do not know that they are having high blood pressure and even if even if you're knowing you are not treating it and the people even who are treating it they're not treating it adequately okay so this is very important this is known as rule of half okay so blood pressure is very very important you have to control your blood pressure along with this you have to make sure that you're controlling your blood sugar level very 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 important okay along with this you have to have an active lifestyle okay you are not saying you have to hit the gym go to uh, go for a walk go for a cycle go for a swimming play in badminton play, play any football or just uh, climb up the stairs or go for a walk to the market don't take always car don't just sit in the um, in front of the tv and just lie down and keep on eating a man you'll be having a central obesity right you have to be uh, active this is very very important do not always worry about okay i'm fat or no yes you do not want to have fat and always not worry about the weight that is coming into your weight scale that is not always going to tell you the real thing okay it might be you might be very muscular it might be this so if you're a guy make sure that you're active and not just guy and guys are more prone to have central obesity which is more more dangerous compared to females females are much more safer as compared to males right so males will be having central obesity which is the most dangerous thing central obesity usual at any circumstance make sure the uh, abdominal area is not more than 42 centimeters it is very dangerous and the waist to hip ratio is also very important okay central obesity is very dangerous and also try to manage your stress rest why i say manage your stress because you cannot remove your stress in this world we cannot remove your stress okay it is impossible to remove your stress so let's say you're working in some environment that puts you in stress for next 10 hours okay 10 hours you are in stress you cannot change that okay no problem once you come to home okay then for that area you'll be happy you'll be smile you sleep properly do whatever you want to do get a bed watch a movie talk to your partner go for a walk sleep uh, watch the sky uh, just mindful watch, watch the sky go for a yoga session anything right yeah just laugh so let's say you're st taking stress for 30 or uh, like uh, 10 hours then take uh, enjoy for next 5, 10 hours, 15 hours, whatever hours is left, okay? That is how you can counter it, okay? You cannot remove stress in the very first place, okay? So, stroke is very, very common nowadays, old age, young age also, young age, very young people are also having heart attack because of sedentary lifestyle or sometimes taking drugs or anything. So, this was a short video about stroke. I, and thank you for watching. Thank you.